It's here, it's here, it's finally here. The HP X211 detachable Chromebook is here. Bit of a mouthful, but I have the box here and uh, it's looking really ugly because the people at Best Buy decided to put the barcode sticker on this side of the box for some reason. And it frustrates me a little bit because the, you know, the back side of the box has absolutely nothing on it. They could have, you know, put all the barcode stickers they want on this side, but uh, they didn't. They decided to choose this side to put the barcode sticker on. And uh, I tried peeling it off, and uh, yeah, I left a mess behind. Tears in my eyes, but hey, it's just the box. I already unboxed the actual thing, the HP X211 detachable Chromebook, and I've had it for the last 24 hours or so, and here are my initial impressions of the HP X211. Before we begin though, like usual, I, I have to read my disclosure statement because once again, Octillion's Tech strives to be a very transparent and forthcoming YouTube channel that people can trust. So in that spirit, I wanna let you know that I purchased the HP X211 with my own personal funds. All the opinions expressed in this video are my own personal opinions. Nobody has paid for or sponsored this video and no entity or person other than yours truly has reviewed or approved the contents in this video prior to its posting on the Octillion's Tech YouTube channel. With that said, let's talk about configurations. The HP X211 Chromebook, or as I like to call it the HP X211, comes with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C compute platform and a 2K 3x2 touch display. The configuration I got was the non-LTE version with 64GB of internal EM eMMC storage and 8GB of RAM. To be clear, I bought this from Best Buy and Best Buy currently, as of September 2021, uh, only carries the configuration of the HP X211 that comes with 8GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. And on the Best Buy website, the HP X211 is currently being sold for $599. There is a very legitimate question as to whether or not this device is even worth $599, but we will not be addressing that today. I promise the full review will actually address that specific question. Despite my frustrations with the sticker situation on this box, uh, the packaging within this thing was actually quite impressive. HP packed it in a nice looking layout that made my unboxing experience pretty enjoyable. Out of the box, you get the HP X211 tablet, a 45 watt charger, the detachable keyboard, the magnetic back cover that also serves as a kickstand, a SIM ejector tool, which is to be used to access the micro SD card tray. And then the one aspect of this device that I really have no idea what to do with, the HP wireless rechargeable USI pen. The USI pen, by the way, seems to come with multiple tips, or at least I think they're tips. I don't know much about USI pens. Uh, I don't use them. I have no experience with them whatsoever. And I swear I'll have it all figured out by the time I do a full review of this product. But uh, yeah, um, I, I don't really have much to say about the USI pen as of now. Back to the device though. Attaching the back cover and the keyboard to the overall device was easy enough. Maybe it's because I'm so used to the Lenovo Duet's kickstand, but I find the HP X211's kickstand to be a little bit more difficult to get into the kickstand formation. Having said that, that may be something that I simply have to get used to. The HP X211's detachable keyboard was a pleasant surprise because uh, it's really, really nice. And it's a lot better than the one that you get with the Lenovo Duet. The keys were surprisingly responsive and the key travels weren't nearly as short or shallow as I had expected them to be. Having said that though, my overall enthusiasm of the HP X211's detachable keyboard went south after realizing that there was this flaw here where I could do this. I don't know if the mic can necessarily pick up the clicking sound here, but um, if you put the right amount of pressure from the bottom of the device, you can actually click the trackpad, which I think is a little problematic. In fairness, this isn't a problem if you're just using um, the HP X211, the detachable keyboard on a desk. But if you're in a desperate situation and you're just having to type on your lap, I don't know. I feel like the, the ability to click the trackpad from the bottom might become a problem. The fact that you can do this to begin with, it just, it makes me question the longevity of this keyboard. And it, it's it to me, it feels like a flaw. And moreover, it's not a flaw that I see with my Lenovo Duet's detachable keyboard. Like, you know, you can't click the trackpad from the bottom with this thing. But with the HP X211's detachable keyboard, you can. Or so I would say, if I had enough data. I don't. Um, for all I know, I might be the only one who has this problem. 
So, to all the people who currently own an HPX211 and for whatever reason decided to watch this, please let me know if your detachable keyboard has this problem. Putting the keyboard aside though, let's go to the tablet. The two USB-C ports is definitely nice. I slightly wish the positioning was a bit different, but I'll save that for the full review. The micro SD card expansion slot is like a dream come true for me. You know, it's one of those things that I wish the Lenovo Duet had, but didn't. The power button on top of the device that also serves as a fingerprint reader is just totally awesome. No typing in the password, no having to take out my phone, none of that. Just, just put my finger on top of the power button and it just scans my fingerprint and I can get into the device. It's, it's great. This is really, really cool. I, I, I'm really digging this thing right now. As far as the actual usage of the device goes, so far it's been pretty good. Um, granted, I've only had a chance to use it for the last few hours or so, but the experience so far has been impressive. I've watched some YouTube, some anime, some TV shows on this thing now, and the viewing experience has been very good. I've also loaded up a few e-readers to consume some ebooks and manga. Both experiences have been good as well. The nice bright screen really makes for a good media consumption experience. And uh, the specs say that this screen can get up to 400 nits and I believe them because the screen gets exceptionally bright. I also installed and played a few games on this thing. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not much of a gamer though, so uh, don't expect me to go into all the emulations and stuff like that. I'm not the guy for that. Having said that, I installed the mobile version of GTA San Andreas and GTA Liberty Cities on the HP X211. Having previously installed and played these same GTA games on the Lenovo Duet, I was really hoping that these GTA games could run with more intense settings on the HP X211 than they did on the Duet. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. On reasonable, moderate settings, both games ran perfectly fine, but they didn't necessarily perform in an exceptional way that made me think that this device was far more powerful than the Duet. To be clear though, I'm not blaming the HP X211 specifically here. I think part of the problem lies with, the, with, lies with how these mobile games were coded to begin with, and I think part of the problem lies with how optimized Android apps are on Chrome OS right now. I, I think a combination of those, these two factors made it so uh, that these games didn't run exceptionally better on the X211 than they did on the Lenovo Duet. I don't think this is necessarily, this is necessarily commentary on whether or not the X211 is more powerful than, than the Lenovo Duet. I think it's obvious uh, from my other use cases that the HP X211 is indeed more powerful than the Duet. It's just, you know, as far as Android games go, there wasn't as much of a difference as I thought there might be. Back to the topic of games though. I was pleasantly surprised to find that I could install the pocket edition of Minecraft onto this thing through the Google Play Store. On the HP X211, Minecraft Pocket Edition works well enough on default settings. I tried blowing up a bunch of TNT in creative mode for my enjoyment, as well as to get a sense of how this thing runs Minecraft. I also tried using Stadia on the HP X211 by playing some Judgment. It's a great game by the way, really can't wait to play the sequel. Unfortunately, my current place does not have a great internet connection so I did experience some lags, but when the connection was okay, the Stadia experience was pretty good on this device. I think cloud gaming, as long as you have a good connection, is gonna be awesome on the HP, HP X211. Last night, I also enabled Linux apps slash Christini on this thing and got some basic Linux apps installed. LibreOffice works as one might expect on this device. I also installed the extended support version of Firefox on this thing too, and it works better than it does on the Duet. Although that's not a super high bar, it does show that the higher specs on the HP X211 does make a difference. I also tried doing some basic multitasking stuff that the Duet was frankly struggling with, and I was impressed to find that the X211 was keeping up pretty well. Now we'll just have to see if my pretty positive impression of the HP X211 changes as I continue to use it and as I get to making a full review. But for the time being, I'm just, I'm having a blast with this device. Finally, here are a few things that people might be curious about. Firstly, the cameras on this thing, as one might expect, are kind of meh. The, the front facing five megapixel camera, for example, is just okay. Currently using the front facing camera here to record this video. And uh, you can also hear how the internal microphone that comes on the tablet also sounds like here as well. Yeah, this is what it looks like. And, on and honestly, I think it might be good enough for Zoom calls and whatnot, but uh, probably nothing more than that. The eight megapixel rear camera that can be found on the HP X211 here is also not great. Um, but then again, we shouldn't really expect that much from the rear camera of any tablet. So I guess it's, I guess it's fine for what it is. Secondly, the HP X211 comes running with a 32-bit version of Chrome OS and it comes with Android version 9. I saw some people asking about this, so I thought it'd be worth mentioning here. And thirdly, this is what the speakers on the HP X211 sound like. Okay, 
we're at low volume now, let's click medium, and let's go to high. Yeah, on, honestly, it's, for tablet speakers, it's gets really loud, and yeah, it's got a little bit of bass too, like the, these aren't bad for tablet speakers. Or, or even even laptop speakers for that matter. Th th these are pretty good. And switching back to the HP X211 Chromebook front-facing camera, uh, as you can tell, I've turned off all the lights and we just have that Windows light over there. So I just wanted to see what the front-facing camera was like with this, this level of lightning. And uh, also I connected my Blue Yeti to this thing because the front, because the internal microphone in this, in this thing is kind of terrible. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me better now. And uh, you know, this is it as far as my initial impressions of the HP uh, X211 Go. Uh, I'll, it'll probably take me a few weeks before I get my full review posted up onto the YouTube channel, but I will be making more content on the HP X211. So if you wanna see that, make sure to subscribe to the Octillion Tech YouTube channel. And if you found this video helpful or enjoyable in any way, shape or form, make sure to hit that like button.